The Austin Convention Center, a hub meant to harness visitor spending and boost the local economy. But industry leaders say they're actually missing out on a lot of money because the center is too small. The Austin Convention and Visitors Bureau says last year alone, 130 groups said no to holding their events in Austin because of a lack of room or availability at the center. It meant the city lost out on a $481 million economic impact. And that is why those leaders are pushing for an expansion. We have heard could be anywhere from 200 to $600 million. KXAN investigator Kylie McGivern ran the numbers through and found out why critics say that money could be put to better use. Yes, and here's why. In the last 20 years, the city of Austin has provided the convention center close to $600 million from the hotel occupancy tax. That's the tax the city gets when visitors stay at hotels here. The bulk of it, about 85%, goes to the convention center. But we discovered a mere 2% of visitors are actually coming to Austin for the events the center holds. So here's a water distribution system. It's grown to be the largest regional water conference in the country. The Texas Water Conference, one of many events that hopes space will grow with it. We have two booths here. Uh, we would take four if we could get them. Yeah, people will come. It's a draw. You know, and people love coming to Austin. It's a destination city. We do demos as well. But critics ask, does the push for a major convention center expansion hold water? Its leaders think so. We have had seven consecutive years of, uh, of growth. Of 10 events that look and bid Austin and the Austin Convention Center, five of them uh, cannot come because either we are unavailable or we're too small. Two decades ago, 47 convention and trade shows held here, events known to bring in out-of-town visitors. At the time, an outside consultant projected with the convention center expansion, those events would nearly double to 98 in 10 years. They didn't. We discovered since then, the number actually dropped to 42 conventions and trade shows last year. What about attendance? That consultant projected the convention center would draw 329,000 for convention and trade shows by 2005. But numbers in the center's long-range master plan reveal in 2013, the most recent year available, we only hit 185,000. Oh my gosh. That's, that's quite the discrepancy. We showed the numbers to Councilmember Ellen Troxclair, who pushed for a task force to look at other ways the hotel occupancy tax can be spent. I want to have all of the information before we make a decision of what is the best way to allocate those funds. Information like this, she would have hoped to see sooner. When you see such a big discrepancy, it certainly, I think, reinforces my um, thinking that we need to dive into this a little deeper before we move forward with making a, dec a decision about convention center expansion. Convention Center Director Mark Tester says the number that really matters is the amount of money the center is bringing to Austin's economy. But attendance numbers as you are pushing for an expanded center are something you hang your hat on because you talk about how attendance has gone up. Sure, sure. We're, we're, we're looking for total economic impact for the city um, and not necessarily how many attendees will be coming in. All we we're saying now is let's hold the city, the folks who made that decision, accountable <laughs> for how it's doing. Haywood Sanders is a professor at the University of Texas San Antonio and author of Convention Center Follies. He's studied industry trends and convention center projections across the country, including Austin. For me, this is far from astonishing. <laughs> I've seen this happen over and over and over again. Referencing data from the Center for Exhibition Industry Research, he says the nationwide number of events has stayed about the same for the last two decades, and yet convention centers continue to expand. Everybody is doing this, and almost invariably they're doing it armed with a consultant study that says you're going to succeed. What is it that leads you to think that somehow against all of these other market trends, against all of this competition, you're going to be the place that's going to succeed and reach those consultant forecasts. 
The demand is there. The hotel community is there. The airport is there. All the other amenities are there. It's just we need a big we need a bigger building to accommodate that demand. Could we be sitting here another 20 years from now saying, well, those assumptions weren't accurate? We will, if 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 the economy changes or our business model changes, we will update the plan. The task force is expected to give its recommendations to council by the end of the month. The convention center says it's important to remember the hotel occupancy tax, which would pay for an expansion, is from visitors. Still, these are public dollars, dollars that could be used in other ways to attract visitors. And I'm curious, where does the convention center spend the money it already gets? And Kylie, you said $600 million in the past two decades from this tax, right? Yes, and this is mostly to cover operating costs and capital improvements. In other words, keeping the light on and fixing the roof. Mm. Kylie, thank you very much. Online right now, see how the Austin Convention Center sizes up to cities with similar populations. Plus, see where Austin spends the rest of that tax money. It's all in this story in the investigative section of KXAN.com.